Hello friends and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another episode of Minimal Mixed Media where I show you guys minimal mixed media techniques to use on your layouts that are a little bit less intimidating than some of the other great mixed media techniques we see all over the internet. But today I'm using my How to Kill a Kit with Style for the month of October and this beautiful floral paper which is from DCWV and as I showed you in that close-up I'm using my Dilutions white paint and a one inch flat brush and drawing circles. Now you will see these are a little wonky at first, but I do try to round them out a bit more. And what's nice about using a paint like this is you really don't need much of it. When you're working with wet mediums, you wanna make sure that you're letting the layers dry. If you want more layers, you can add more, but if you add too much wet, it will warp your paper. So here you can see four little wonky circles and it's done after it dried overnight. So I'm working on this the next day. I have my photo out of my lovely cat, Ted, cuddling my lap. And I just knew this color scheme would work really, really well with what I had in my kit because of all the grays and yellows from the papers I pulled out as well as the embellishments I found. And I use a majority of this color scheme right here on this layout that was included in my kit. Again, I adore gray and yellow together, so this one was super easy for me to do. But you'll see I have four sections now. So essentially I broke my paper down into quadrants thanks to these circles. And what ends up happening is I wanted to put essentially four different sections on this layout. So it was sort of a disassembled layout instead of one giant layout. But you guys will see how it evolves over the course of this process video. I go through tons and tons of the embellishments in my kit but I am going to pull out a ton of these Simple Stories cat stickers and I use all of the ones I pulled out because again, I adore this color scheme and thanks to the sticker sheet is where I end up pulling in a another color, which would be this light teal color, which I think works super duper well in the end, um, but I would have just stuck with sort of monochromatic yellow and then black, gray and white tones. If I could do that all the time, I would do monochromatic, but I'm really into the dual colored layouts lately. I think it adds a lot of pop of color while also having all of that neutrals with the grays and the blacks and the whites. But here I'm gonna start layering behind my photo. But first I wanna write down the date. Now I'm pretty sure I actually wrote down the wrong date for this. I wrote down the 2019 date instead of the 2018 date, but I'm pretty sure it was the 2018 date when this was taken. So that's okay though, I'll have to fix it and look at the date later on my computer. But I'm going to start with that yellow paper, which is from the same DCWV Honey Deer collection. And then I mount it on this paper from Maggie Holmes Carousel, which is the zebra, unicorn, whatever they might be. I think they're zebras. And I use that as a pop of teal, which I want to incorporate throughout the layout, even though I just have it pulled out in the stickers right now. So these three dimensional stickers I'd pulled out from the beginning are all from Michaels. It was an old collection they did. It was all this yellow, gray, black um, embellishments. We had tags, we had die cuts, we had these 3D stickers and I really liked them. And this is the last that I have of that collection. So I definitely tried to use up a ton of it on this layout. Now, before I try to glue anything down embellishment or photo wise, I end up trimming half an inch off of my lovely paper here that I did mixed media on and I'm going to mat it on black cardstock. One, this will help with the warping from the mixed media and two, it'll help add a little bit more contrast and finality to the edges of this layout. And I really love using black cardstock in this specific way. I think it provides additional contrast. It provides so much by just a simple layer of framing the border. So here I start building out this newly sort of double cluster at the bottom. Originally I wanted each piece to stay in their own quadrant, but the bottom ends up morphing into a double, into a single, even though you can still tell the painted circles are back there. I think it still works really, really well. And I have a Heidi Swap journaling spot off to the left-hand side that says remember. And so far I've paired that with a doodle bug doily. And now I wanna cut this tag in half and sort of add another layer under it. This is definitely one of those all of the things layouts, a maximalist style with so many different types of embellishments. And I think when you have a sort of 
broken up layout like this, whether it be a pocket page or like a four quadrant like this one is or a grid, you can really pack on the embellishments because you're sectioning it off. So everything still has a little bit of breathing room. And I end up putting the title over on the bottom right on top of a tag and then pairing that with some of the label stickers that came out of the Cat Simple Story sticker set. And here I have this label from Heidi Swap or Tab rather that I end up putting a little phrase sticker on from that cat set again and I just, oh, it's so cute. That pop of blue with the yellow just works so well and I really didn't expect it to, but I really like how it turned out. And as for this top cluster, I end up pulling in that vertical banner from the We Are Memory Keepers typecast collection and then pairing that with the three-dimensional pieces from Michaels and then pulling in a ton of the cat stickers, including that little cat holding a ball of yarn which is beyond precious. But I definitely think that this layout wouldn't have come together so easily if I didn't have as many layering pieces. And I talk about this a ton over on my Patreon and my real-time process videos, but I really adore tags and doilies and larger ephemera pieces as great base pieces to start clusters. And when you have free floating clusters like I do in the top left and top right, you definitely need something solid behind it. And luckily I'm able to do that with all of the pieces in my kit. So while I am building this cluster in the bottom left, I include doily, I have the tag, I have the large journaling card piece. It all just really helps substantiate the element as one, especially when you start layering it in a way that gives you continuality behind the pieces. So it looks like a really long tag behind there when in reality it's just half of one on each side. And you will notice I am putting different types of twine on this layout. I thought it'd be fun to do some different types. So I put the teal one on the left tag and then I'm gonna use the black and white twine in a bow on the right hand side here. I also have this washi tape strip that I pulled out from Jen Hadfield and you'll see me sprinkle that around instead of using it in its full 12 by 12 or 12 inch glory. I end up just using little strips of it here and there and it really, really helps add Again, a bit of contrast because we're introducing black a couple more times in different clusters and it just provides a little bit more interest because it's a stripe and it has that, you know, varying contrast and of course a pattern. Here's where I take that Pink Fresh Studio leatherette cardstock sticker and I put it under the left hand side of that journaling spot and what's nice about that is it's on a little bit of foam which just adds a little bit more texture and dimension to this layout. And on the right hand side here, I just added the other half of that doodle bug pool doily and put it underneath my title. Again, just a little splash of blue here and there really goes a long way. And they're not exact same shade. While the yellows really do match pretty well in terms of like this mustardy bright yellow, the blues aren't exactly perfect. I have some dark ones, I have some lighter ones, but I do really like how it turns out. And same thing with these um, 3D embellishments. I think it's kind of odd that, <laughs> you know, I'm using a bunch of things that are very, very matchy-matchy, which is totally not my normal style. I am more so put things together on your own rather than using a set, but this set just worked so very well and I had to use it for this page because this background paper screamed at me to use it. And I really adore mixing old and new. So bringing in all of these super old, Michael's themed embellishments while I'm coordinating with some new Heidi Swap stuff and I have some flair from some small shops, the washi tape, all of the things on this layout are super duper fun to use together. And don't be afraid to use multiples of the same things on the same layout. So I have multiple tags that are different. I have multiple doilies that are different. It's okay to mix and match. I think it's actually super fun to do so. And here I'm using multiple twines. So here I'm gonna use the blue, but this time in a bow, just add a little bit of variance. And I could have used the same one. I just thought that the bottom right needed more contrast than anything. And I really like how it turns out. But here I'm using a little chipboard tag in that top right cluster, just to add a little bit more something. And then here I use a little acetate arrow. I'm just trying to mix in all of the things. And what's really fun about a simple color scheme like this is it's super easy to find additional things to mix in because I can use anything that's black, white, gray, yellow, and teal, this lighter teal color, and it'll go flawlessly. So it was easy to use cat themed products. It was easy to use love themed products and my title and embellishments all coordinate because they're from the same set. 
And what's nice about having a 3D embellishment set is you can always take it off foam adhesive so it becomes a little bit less 3D and just provides a bit more variance on your layout while still having that matchy feel. So here I'm going to glue down my title, which is, of course, a Michaels embellishment paired with a pretty little studio, or no, sorry, I'm sorry, a scrap and happy studio flare, epoxy flare, which I adore. And I'm dipping back into this pink fresh studio sticker set and pulling out a couple of those gold hearts. There's a tiny bit of gold on this layout already, so I wanted to emphasize that just a teensy bit more. And so I do that with these gold foil hearts. And what I really like about them is they're subtle. They go with the theme of this darling little cat sleeping next to me. And to finish off this layout, I start looking for enamel dots. I know I can go with my Nouveau drops, but I'd like something a little bit different. So what I end up doing is using a bunch of these teal and gray dots. And these are from Webster's Pages, which if you guys haven't checked out Webster's Pages, I think they're a bit underrated for scrapbooking supplies because they're often known for their traveler's notebooks and journaling supplies. So definitely check them out if you haven't already. I will try to have links down below to all of the products I feature in this video. And to finish off, I'm using these Nouveau drops. I have the crystal Nouveau drops in black and I have the other ones, the jewel drops in the mist. I think it's called stone mist and it's essentially just a clear gray color and they just end up adding a ton of extra interest onto this layout and I really really adore how this layout came out. I think it's definitely in the top 10 for this month if not the top three. I'm pushing for top three but you guys will have to be sure you're subscribed so you can see all the other great layouts I've made this month because I have some really great ones coming up. But let me know what you guys think of this technique. Just a simple brush stroke in these circular patterns can really help break out a layout and make it feel a little bit less blocked and a little bit less modular in looks. But I do hope you guys enjoyed all of these clusters and all of these tips I've shared along the way. Be sure to check out the playlist down below so you guys can check out my, the rest of my How to Kill a Kit with style layouts as well as the other minimal mixed media layouts if you've missed out on any. But thank you so so much for watching. Let me know what your favorite part of this layout is, which cluster you liked, if you like the color scheme, if you like the cute photo of Ted. I would love to know in the comments down below. But thank you guys so, so much again for watching. I just cannot believe how wonderful this layout turned out. And I wouldn't be doing all this mixed media if it weren't for you guys. And I do hope you appreciate these tips that I'm sharing along the way and the mistakes I'm sharing as well. But thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.